Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to the inaugural show fostering STEM career awareness organized by the 3C subcommittee uh, under the Koja Shia Ishnashri Jamaat. My name is Muhammad Zahir. I am a biomedical scientist, a medical geneticist, and most importantly, your host for today. So this event is brought to you by Careers Hub, a profile that falls under the subcommittee which focuses on careers, capacity building, and counseling. Um, Careers Hub is also dedicated to offering career-related information, tools, and guidance and opportunities to propel members of the community towards a prosperous occupational journey and future. You can find Careers on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube uh, channel updated with this particular content at careershub.ksij. Now jumping to the topic today, the global economy is changing. Right? The evolving of technology has somewhat brought new skills into the market and lots of changes into what's actually required by both employers as well as those looking for a job, right? And current jobs are disappearing due to the automation and the new jobs are emerging every day as a result of these advances. If we look at the uh, advances in, in, in terms of how technology has brought about change, the way students learn, the way they connect uh, and interact with each other, um, there's so much evolving compared to if we look at things 10, 15, 20 years down the line, right? Uh, now, skills developed by students through STEM, that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, uh, has provided them with the, uh, the necessary foundation to sort of succeed at school and beyond, right? So as per my understanding, STEM is an approach to learning and uh, development that integrates the areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The, if we look at the current statistics, the employer demand for STEM qualifications is very high. And it is definitely going to increase, right, over the next 5, 10, 15 years down the line. 75% of the jobs in, in, in the fastest growing industries require workers with STEM skills. And you have to be competitive, right? Uh, and we need people that can adapt. So not just to be skilled, but then you need to also be able to adapt to the changing uh, environment. So guys, today we have uh, three very important panelists today um, in this discussion on raising awareness uh, on STEM-related careers, and, more, and all of them uh, are based here in, in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Our first panelist is uh, Brother Shokat Ali Zahir Hussein. He is the founder and technical director of Robotech Labs, an organization that aims to create solutions in the community by providing technical support through hands-on learning, testing, and prototyping. So he's worked with several organizations, and he aspires to ensure that there is an impact-based application uh, that's always uh, strived for in a world where digitalization and automation thrive, uh, ensuring that no one is, is left behind to avail maximum benefit uh, to one and all. So he's worked with uh, various organizations, including Vodacom Foundation, United Nations Development Program, Hexter, World Food Program, in areas of education, health, uh, e-mobility, agriculture, and more. Our second panelist today is Dr. Mariam Muhammad Ali, who's a medical doctor and graduated from the Muhimbili University of Health and Allied Sciences and is currently interning at Muhimbili National Hospital. She's passionate about improving the way uh, medicine is practiced in East Africa and uh, conducting research to develop impactful technology in the field. She simultaneously uses her free time by helping a group of AI uh, enthusiasts, artificial intelligence, to create an AI-powered clinical diagnostic tool for deployment in peripheral health centers. And our final uh, panelist, I think the youngest of them all, is uh, Brother Isa Muhammad Ali. He is the current community manager of the Tanzania's first AI lab, uh, and also happens to be a computer science student at the University of Dar es Salaam. He has a particularly green thumb in implementing emerging technologies in an African context to empower the youth to solve challenges around them. 
Now, secretly, empathy cares deeply about the future of Tanzanian youth and is known to have been advocating and working around this since his high school days. So jumping into the topic where I really want to introduce uh, STEM. Mariam, what <coughs> is STEM education and why is it so important in the modern era? So like you said, science, STEM is uh, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And um, I think uh, people eventually brought these uh, four subjects together, four vast fields together, because these are the fields that are needed for uh, for discovery, discovery of new things, as well as developing, uh, so taking those discoveries and developing solutions for so many things across vast fields. But um, so there's STEM, right? But in order to do that, you need to know how to carve that niche out right. and um, create your own market for those solutions that you're going to make. So for that, they've added an A, so it's now called STEAM, so okay. science, technology, engineering, arts, arts, and mathematics. Right, that's, that's an important addition, I would suppose, in, yes. the, in the STEM yeah. world, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, Isa, maybe you could highlight some of the skills that one requires, uh, if at all he or she wants to, to join the field. Sure, so I believe this is actually something that Shogat will be able to do answer better, because that's... He's been the longest in that side of the sure, field and sure. he's been putting in. But from my perspective, um, one of the most uh, interesting skills or required skills, I would say, is just having concepts and ideas that a person is curious enough about to actually follow through and not worry too much about the risks. Like Shogat will talk a lot more about his adventures in the STEM world. Yeah, and um, <laughs> Yeah, so those types of uh, skills where just because someone doesn't love math doesn't mean that STEM isn't for them. Right. There Very are important. different ways to get into it. Sure. And to me, one of the foundations is just having something that you're curious enough about and willing to follow through with. Right, right, right. Very interesting. Why STEM in, the tr in today's modern era how do you see STEM as, as something that could sort of benefit the society, uh, benefit the, the community, benefit the government, a, a country? Why should I, as a parent, so to speak, invest in, in my child in, in STEM? So it's, 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 a nice, it's a very good question. I think it's a very deep question as well because um, with the way, with the current trend in technology, everything is entering the field of digitalization and automation. Yeah. And we need to ensure that the students of today can adopt to these changes when we come and actually enter the, right. the job field. Right. You know? So keeping that in mind, first of all, I mean, talk about STEM doesn't mean you need to be a scientist or technologist or engineer or person with mathematics. Mm -hmm. I think when someone talks about STEM, it's more about the skills behind the whole concept of STEM. So being, part, being able to have um, cognitive thinking or digital ana analysis skills is like entering a puzzle room. Mm -hmm. and you, you have the skills that necessary to actually identify clues around the room mm. to actually solve the mystery. Interesting. This is how I would portray STEM. Right. So right. Even, if, if right. even the way we do we to actually um, have STEM to our side, or how we portray STEM, is the ability to take up um, certain, certain courses or certain modules that can right. help you build something, something tangible or something applicable outside your classroom environment. And why should governments take STEM seriously? So I think the government has had a very, very big interest in having independence of the people. So right. I think we've had this right. uh, so-called, um, I don't know what, what word would be the right way to say it, but this, in, this dependence on foreign support, mm -hmm. that we don't have, don't have the necessary skills or knowledge to actually do things independently. And I think the government has made a very good stance by saying, you know what, mm -hmm. tomorrow I want you to leave this handyman job and take up a ability to run a business, but do we have the skills to do it? Correct. So the government has been trying to enforce STEM by giving people the ability to take up responsibility themselves. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. some of the things you can look at are, for example, the ability to have education systems change. Mm -hmm. but the, perfect, the perfect example is recently the announcement that the government has introduced new combinations for A levels. So right. one of them is yes. computer science, for example. Absolutely. Languages is an example. Right. So that just tells you that the direction is industrialization, but on a local perspective. Fantastic. Yeah. In fact, let, let me just connect that to, what, to, my, to my next question for you. Now, I know as a kid, uh, you have been someone who likes to break and make things, yeah. right? I you still do that. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, share with the audience where 
where, where, or how do you make that decision into pursuing mechatronics engineering? First of all, tell us what that all is about. Yeah. But I'm sure uh, a lot of people really don't know what mechatronics engineering is about. Uh, tell us also a little bit about, you know, uh, your parental support towards you right. pursuing that uh, that pathway, and and really, how is that field applicable to Tanzania today? Right. So, um, mechatronics is very easy to break it down. If you break it in a sentence, mech and tronic. Okay. So, mechatronics basically is a combination of programs together. So, you have okay. mechanical, electronics, electrical, computer science, and a little bit of engineering management. Okay. A little bit of computer science as well. So, the course basically gives you a piece of everything that is there in the engineering world. Now, the problem with me during high school, I wasn't able to choose a particular engineering field because I had diverse interests. Because when I'm building something, I know I'm using skills of mechanics. I'm using designing skills, I'm using coding skills and that. I'm also using electronic skills behind it. And for me to find a career or a course particular to my interest was very difficult. So I sat on a joint loop on the opportunities available and came, of course, uh, came, uh, came across this one called electromechanical first. Okay. The okay. difference between electromechanical and, ele and mechatronics was there were two, a few elements missing. Like the computer science element wasn't really focused on. It was more just the machine aspect. But when I, when I heard about mechatronics then, and the way they described to me was being an individual who can fit in any field with relevant skills to bring something just from an idea to actually a product. And that's just like a light bulb. Like, this is what I really want to do. And this is so would it be correct to say that you are that bridge that comes into different engineering, providing engineering solutions yeah, in any field whatsoever? Basically, yeah. Right? So we, the only drawback, uh, the challenge is that you don't have like, in-depth information, but you right. have enough information to actually put on tape. That's Fantastic. how the course is. That's excellent. I think then that, that's a very important field itself. Yeah. So my, my understanding would you'd be a lot in the research and development area where yeah r and d testing right yeah. so we try creating solutions it's not that, so right. that, that thoughts to a pro, to a to a physical product or yeah a product yeah thing, yeah that's what we can do and then from there we look at people who can manufacture them eventually so we bring ideas and, and, and that and that's possible in tanzania it is possible i think it's right. just a matter of this right investment and support from people and in fact, the, the biggest support for me is my, my, family, my mom. Right, right. So it's the same thing in my high school again, that I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. All right. And she, was, she gave me options. We met a counselor. I told her I wanted to do mechatronics. And my counselor was very straightforward and he said, you know what? There's no scope for it. I'm like, okay. there's no you look at it today, I'm going to get it four, five years down the line. Yeah. And I know with time, the scope will have demand. Right. And my mom said, look, as long as you love what you're doing, and you know you can do it. Just right. Support. And so this is it. I make mistakes, I make blunders. So like, as long as you know what you're doing and you're happy with it, then just go ahead. So it is absolutely important to have that oh, parental that's support when you're making decisions. I don't know if Maria Menisa would agree with me. In fact, that, that, let, me, yeah. let me just jump directly yeah. to you, Mariam. Uh, uh, you know, you, you are sort of, you've taken a really unconventional pathway, right? You are someone who's done medi medicine, you're, you're a medical doctor, yeah. you know. Uh, but then you also, and I, and I love that fact that you've decided to use that background and venture into uh, a space that of artificial intelligence for, you know, diagnostic purposes that will complement what you've what, you, what you've done uh, as your bachelor's, uh, uh, you know, program. Yeah. Run th run through how did you you know make that choice, um, and, and 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 you know what what was the thinking when you were making those decisions? Uh, that that and I decided to take a gap year, which is completely completely unconventional. You hear of gap years before your undergraduate, not immediately after your undergraduate, especially you know not just before an internship. Um, and I was like, I don't want to continue being a doctor because uh, I don't see problems actually being solved. I see us trying to we're we're just clawing at, at, at whatever medications we have, whatever uh, technologies around us, yeah. and just trying to like, you know, stuff cotton wool inside a pipe that's like overflowing with water. We're not actually going back to the source of it. What's the actual problem that's happening? Actual research that's supposed to happen. Um, and so I was like, I, I need to intern somewhere else. I actually wanted to intern somewhere else, somewhere in the tech field. Um, because since I was a child, I feel like from the moment I was born, I knew I wanted to be a scientist. I wanted right. to invent things. Right. So I was like, where in Tanzania can I work at that is going to give me the skills? Uh, I, I want to understand how to, uh, how to have a startup in the tech field. And I wanted to build my skills in that area. So I came across um, Elsa Health. Uh, it was called Dr. Elsa at the time. Now it's called Dr. Elsa Health. Um, and these are a group of people not really with a medical background 
and they're developing artificial intelligence tools for medical health professionals. Right. And I was like, wow. Um, and I had happened to meet them a couple of times in, in, in conferences. Um, and so I just approached them, I just uh, called them and I was like, hey, so I did this, this and this. Uh, do you guys have a medical doctor on board? And they were like, uh, no, we usually hire them on a consultant basis. And I was like, uh, can, I, it, like can I just work for you guys? And they were like, huh, let's think about it. And I was like, this is what I can bring on the table, ABC. Right. Um, and, they were, and I walked in for what was supposed to have been an interview, but it ended up being a two hour long chat about just future technology <laughs> and what we can do. Right. And uh, when I walked out is when I realized, oh, that was my interview, right. Um, and we walked out with more questions in our head about what we can do together. Right. And so I was like, okay, yeah, so. I so got so the it job. It yeah, was, it was more of, of pitching. But, but I pitched the, myself. Right. Yeah. But the important thing is one, you knew exactly what you could bring to the table, and therefore you knew exactly uh, why you did what you did, and, and how you can contribute. And and the other thing that I that I that I really liked about this whole uh, you know decision is that it's not really one particular field. That it's uh, you know amalgamation oh, yeah, of yeah, multiple yeah. fields yeah. that provides solutions to our ongoing problems. Right. Uh, let, me, let me quickly bring, bring in uh, Isa. I think you've, you've had also a, a very uh, um, confusing sort of decision making in terms of what you want to do. You wanted to become uh, a, a, an aeronautic engineer mm -hmm. and then you, 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 you wanted to venture into uh, uh, becoming a pilot uh, and, and then you end up being a computer scientist. Run through what, what went through your head and, and, and how your family supported you, um, mm -hmm. you know, when you made those choices. Uh, sure. So I don't know whether I call myself a computer scientist yet. I think <laughs> I'm a, uh, let's see how we can apply tech to solve problems right. in person. I don't know what the <coughs> official title for that would be, but computer science technologist, uh, tech troubleshooter consultant, <laughs> thingy. troubleshooter yeah. consultant. It doesn't really have a name or a title to it, yet. and, and yet. that's what's most interesting to me. So. Yeah, I was very much undecided with my career direction, honestly, I still am, I don't know where I'm heading with all of this. Um, I'm just going with the flow, I'm following wherever my curiosity takes me and I'll see where I end up going. One of the things um, which I'm grateful for is my parents did support, but they also did have their own aspirations. Till today my mom wants me to end up in the medical field. Always. Yeah, <laughs> she still wants me to be a surgeon. Even the time I started talking about surgeon. technology, yeah. yeah, when I started talking about technology, I want to get into technology. She's like, "Here's a course on radiology." Oh wow! Or, yeah, <laughs> so, so, so like, yeah, yeah uh, trying to find that combination. That like, right. sure, let this kid get into tech, but let him still get into medicine. Right. But um, right. I, at some point, I decided I know too many medical people. So around my form five decision. Uh, when we choose our main subjects, I just dropped biology. Form three? No, form I three. took it in form three and form oh. four. So that kills wow. your mother's aspirations, yes. right? right. Yeah. But that doesn't stop her from trying. Uh, she still tries. <laughs> yeah. She still tries. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> she still wants me to somehow end up in the medical field. And uh, okay. With this kind of technology, the beauty about STEM is it's not independent. You'll never find technology being independent. It'll always be in another Connected sector. Yeah. yeah. So like Elsa Health, it still is the technology being applied in the medical sector right. kind of thing. Right. And you'll find this across multiple sectors. It's not limited. So my career path was always, does this thing interest me? It does. What is the fastest way I can get into this field? Right. That was literally one of my choices to choose computer science as a degree because it was the only three-year degree I could find. I did not want a four-year degree. And right now I wish I had taken a two-year degree. <laughs> so uh, the fastest way I could have gotten into the field is how I decided to take my direction. And it was more through informal exposure. I got exposed through Shogun's Robotech was m one of my first uh, initiations into the technology ecosystem here in Dar es Salaam and Tech Fest and all of that. And through that is where I started getting more right, exposed right. to different places. So, so you're just jumping, uh, helping my, my work get easier. Shogun, that was in fact my next question. Right. Now that you have become 
uh, a mechatronics engineer, right. graduated from Manipal University, one of the most reputable universities in India. Right? We, yeah. we yeah. both have studied okay. there. Uh, and when you came back to right. Tanzania, today you, you own the Robotech, you know, you, you're co-founder and director yeah. of the Robotech yeah. Labs. Um, you also you also ventured into uh, Tech Fest, which yeah. I have been part of and yeah. I loved it. Um, take us through that journey of yours right. and, and tell us a bit more about these activities. What inspired you to actually start them and where do you want to take them? Right, so I, I, I graduated in 2016. I came back and I think at that point I was really I was just looking for a job to start myself. Right. For the sake of experience. <coughs> Um, I started working as a maintenance engineer for a company called uh, Tapco, Trans Auto Parts, and, uh, and, and AutoZone, so the same as my boss, so the, the boss of both companies. So my job basically was to <coughs> update machines. So the funny thing was I was trying to update machines running on Windows 98 and floppy disks. It was very interesting as well. And so I, I worked there for a year, and then I just started asking myself questions, am I really growing? Am I really aspiring to what I want to achieve and do? And the answers are always no. So those questions are kind of like, the question, the kind of, I started questioning my my existence in the, in the space, and like, this is this is what I really want to do anymore. And this when I started speaking to my my boss at that time, I said, look, I really don't think I can do this anymore. I want to do more. And I was introduced to a few people who oh, were doing drones. I said, no, I'll just try venturing with them. I, I I said I want to work with them. And again, people said they'll offer you a job, but don't get a job. So it was, it was a back and right. forth right. dilemma. And then finally, I put my hand on and said, "No, what? That's it." So I told my boss, "I like, no, what? I really love building things." Like explaining my, my portfolio, Manipal. I was part of robotics, as part of the side of automation. We used to do some really, really crazy and lucrative things. And I really wanted him to see what I would see. And he said, "You know what? I, I, I see what you see, and are you willing to take a risk?" And I, I hand on my heart, that's good. And just put our foot down there and said, "I want to start." So we started designing a few kits. We got them manufactured, brought them here, and we started running as an educational system. So. The idea was that we enter with the foot with, of STEM, with mm -hmm. education first, and inspire mm -hmm. people what you can do with technology particularly. Mm -hmm. And with that, basically, just when Robotech was born. So right. the idea of, or the theme of Robotech was being passionately curious. Right. So that's right. the theme we always right. hold, everyone sees about Robotech is passionately curious. Right, right. right. And, uh, and then, so that was the first step. The second step basically was then, I still feel we can do more. I was just, just basically what you call crazy hungry to do so much to help people. So my experience in, I think, in IIT Mumbai, the tech fest in IIT Mumbai, was just one of a kind. You can see people from Italy bring their Formula One cars for simulation. You just get sit in the car and you're like, this is what you want to experience technology. Right. And the robots that can fight, you can build this. So that's why STEM, that's why STEM was very much introduced to me heavily. You, right. can, you can use right. basic mathematics, basic technology, so basic sciences to build a robot that can do so many things together. Like if if they can do it, and I can do it, can't people here do it? Right. And that's when I said, you know what, we really need to bring tech fest here. Right, right. So aside from just to be a small paper, piece of paper, scribbling onto the whiteboard and then uh, meeting a few people in the Muntazi was a sort of homeless for me, I was like, you know what, I really want to do like this. And there were a bunch of around 60, 70 students that said, yeah, but we want to do it as well. Right. And that's when we launched that first. So there's basically a platform where people could use their learner skill and show, show the application of the skill. A perfect example of in that. In the real world. In the real world, right, for example. So, right. so to show you the impact of the education system we're building, mm. we had a, we converted our events into games. Right. You see? Right. So one of, the, one of them was, example, a uh, blind man's alley, where people had yes. to yes. wire code and put yes. on a smart city to help blind people. Correct. But not only are you doing it, are you coding, but you're also experiencing what it's like being a blind person. Correct. So this Correct. is the first thing. The second thing is when it one step ahead. Right. And you're like, you know what? Why don't you invite the blind school people? Let them see what you're making and see the impact. People were just so happy because they saw. So, so you use them as a prototype to do. Yes, actually, yes. In the right. second tech fest that we had, we actually okay. brought the school, students from the blind school. They tested the device in the, in the event, and their feedback was very crucial to us because it told us, you know what, there's so much more you can do. And and since then, it's just been the thing. So tech fest is a place where you take, you learn a skill, you see the application of the skill, and you compete amongst others for the sake of. So 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 that's so wonderful, and and I remember my personal uh, visit to tech fest 2.0. Uh, whereby I, I found this kid, he developed a prototype of one of those uh, uh, vending, uh, machine. vending machines yeah, yeah. That, that gives out a sanitary pad, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I think I mentioned this even before, I was so impressed. Yeah. But, but the question here is, how do we ensure that we are helping these kids transition from a cardboard prototype into a real prototype that can be actually implemented into let's say a, a school or yeah. a hospital yeah. what, what where are we where are we in that in that 
downstream gene. We are not too far, to be honest. Okay. I mean, if, if you've seen a cardboard structure, it just tells us the first step of that's the, that's the prototype. The next step is to iterate on the prototype to make it much more better, much more cheaper, much right. more affordable. Right. You know? And so that's where we are at the moment. And the third step that will then come in is where you actually say you have final iteration, and this is what I want to commercialize, and then take it to manufacture. So then the biggest challenge of manufacturing is again, can we do it locally? Can we right, use? right. So most of these so have to be outsourced because correct. we don't have the have equipment, it's expensive, we right. don't still have the relevant skills to the manufacturing. Yep. So the idea basically <coughs> is for robotic now, apart from education being one of one of the elements I may say now officially, sure. is that now we're looking at a digital fabrication center. Okay. Where you can take your idea and prototype it at the education space, but then come into the fabrication space and take it one step ahead. And then you can see, okay, can this be scaled? Then you start asking the arts aspects of STEM. So you have STEAM now, right, as Maria mentioned. That's where the arts element comes in. So look at the cost of building it, the viability, your customers, the scalability as well. All these things are the questions that you need to answer. And say, okay, you know what, then I'm ready to take it to the market. Then you go back. So you take manufacturing, look for your people who can manufacture the parts for you, if you have to outsource it. But we will definitely need to focus on local in-house manufacturing. So if I can... And correct me if I if I if I'm wrong, but the way I understand what what you're trying to do is you have an idea yes. and you want to make a product. Yeah. What you need is help of STEM and and yeah. STEM meaning people with different skill set That's that right. one can be somebody who can code, somebody can be somebody who's expert on the physical material, yeah. somebody who's an expert in in, in putting things together yeah. uh, to actually make a, a, a sort of a prototype. Yeah become into a reality that can be commercialized, that can be industrialized, that can be yeah. uh, a, a, an income generator. For, so so, so the skill right. of all these skills being available to an individual. So the person has the skills, like a mechanics engineer, to code it, to wire it, to right. test it. Right. And he has people who are in who are expertise in the field to guide him. So that's what Fantastic. we offer in this space. Fantastic. And, 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 I, and, I, and I do remember talking to, uh, let me bring in here Dr. Mariam. <laughs> Uh, your experience with, with Robotech and, and TechFest uh, that myself and Shoka were just talking about, uh, how did you get into the, the STEM sort of field by wow. your experience with CERN? Well, first, first of all, tell us what CERN is all about and your current uh, work in the AI space. So, treat it as two different questions. Okay, first question is? Sorry. CERN and your involvement with, with uh, how Robotech. that came about. Right. Um, so, CERN is basically um, the world's largest laboratory. It's about 70 kilometers in circumference, I think, okay. currently. Okay. Um, and it is a radiation and nuclear uh, research lab, world's biggest. It's in Europe, uh, just on the border of Geneva, of uh, Switzerland and France. And it's 100 meters under, it's 100 meters underground. Wow. Yeah. Um, so because there's such a large laboratory and such a large amount of people working to further nuclear science, um, they come up with their own sort of uh, engineering solutions, their own technology to make this happen. So when they come up with that kind of technology, they're like, oh, this was cool. Do you think we can apply it in another field? So um, that's how something like medical physics has now come up. Uh, where the same kind of technology that they use to uh, shoot those beams of atoms are used in cancer therapy. Um, or the same kind of technology that is used to see what's happening in those labs, because you can't be there when stuff is happening, is what is now used to make colored x-rays that just happened last year. So um, CERN in 2018 decided that we, we need to make this transition faster where our technology can help the medical field even faster. Mm -hmm. So they uh, held a medtech hackathon mm -hmm. where people from all over the world can apply. There was no limit uh, to your education, whether you're a master's, nothing at all, or even a businessman. Uh, if you could prove that you could contribute, that you, hadn't, that you could contribute this, you were free to come. Um, we had to apply in teams. And they had certain calls, uh, which means that certain problems that you could choose which one to solve. I think there were about five or six. We decided to go for the call for uh, a solution for health mobility to develop a technology to particularly uh, help in measuring respiratory rate. Um, this particular technology should be used in places with har that have very harsh conditions. Um, and that's what we applied for and we won.
Fantastic. Congratulations Thank on you. that. On the, the underdogs, right? Like we just said, those are like masters, scientists. You know? Yeah, yeah. There, were, there was a bunch of people who all had masters and PhD degrees, and right, then there was us right. with uh, still finishing our undergraduate and yeah, a so guy with a bachelor's. Let me bring in let me bring in Isa here, uh, community manager of the first ever Tanzanian AI labs. That sounds so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> can you tell us a bit more about this and? You know, whoever is listening from our audience, if they would like to join, uh, you know, is, is, there a, is there a path, is there, is there a way, uh, maybe you should enlighten them. It was a very simple thing, actually. There is development in the space. There were already people in the AI field working locally to develop solutions and deploy. There are universities that are providing uh, education, formalized education in the field, including the University of Dar es Salaam, mm -hmm. the University of Dodoma has active stuff happening, Nelson Mandela. So there was a lot of development happening and there is also, should I say, financial incentive around it because there are development partners who are looking to put money mm -hmm. into solutions that use the technology that supports uh, especially youth and adolescents' health and well-being. So, the environment was ripe and any time that happens naturally there is growth mm -hmm. we saw that the growth was very siloed though it was happening separated different paths there wasn't a lot of value exchange and that's where we came with the proposition of let's start this lab that enables this type of value exchange and the value exchange is between all of the individuals and it's more of a community at this point where an enthusiast has an opportunity to learn from a practitioner mm -hmm. and practitioners have the opportunity and ability to apply their skills have it be known we assist with publicizing it and that kind of thing <coughs> and from there it's just growing the direction of growth at this point is looking at uh, supporting applied research, supporting development of actual solutions that solve any type of local problem. And joining it is just registering on the website and joining a Telegram group. It's not a very formal group right now right. because it is a community. And the mm -hmm. beauty of a community is that anyone can propose to do anything. Right. It's right. not until right. that I come in and say that, no, we have to do things like this. No, anyone's free to propose as long as it's within the thematic area of artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence, we use the word only because it's easily identifiable. It's not a very good word to use. It's not very representative of the technology. So if someone is interested in looking into the field, they, they should think more about predictive analytics or analyzing data and being able to look at trends or even simpler things like comparing what hotel to go to based on customer um, feedback. So rather than just looking at the number of stars, you look at the comments people have put and decide according to that, should I go visit this place, that kind of thing then being automated where you don't need a person to do it. That's already moving into the field of artificial intelligence and the word AI is just uh, a fancy buzzword right now. So is there sort of a criteria in the sense that supposedly I'm a 16 year old boy yeah. with, with some aspiration towards or some love towards computers and I have fantastic ideas that I want to bring to light. Would, would me joining the, the Tanzania AI would be the right step in making or in realizing, uh, let's say, that idea materializing? The best thing you can do yeah. for that idea to materialize is figure out how to Google. You <laughs> just need good Googling skills, honestly. Absolutely. These types of communities and stuff is just there for extra support. In right. case like right. you need to meet someone who has done this before or meet others with similar ideas but to take an idea from an idea to an actual execution a lot of times especially if it's software based you just need to know how to google for someone who's interested in computers and technology especially if they're able to identify what field 
if they if are able to say that I want to build applications or websites, it becomes a lot easier. There's a lot of information online available. Right. When they're not sure is especially when to leverage these communities and right. groups. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It lets them explore. So there's the Tanzania AI lab that we focus more on artificial intelligence. There's the Google developers group. There's the Facebook developers group. There's Andela developer groups. And they are more generalized. And a lot of times you can go to these groups and visit their meetups, their sessions, and understand what exactly do they deal with to get that breadth of information. So for someone who's not sure where to start, it helps to go to these types of things and experience and listen to what exists out there. Go to things like TechFest and see how can software and hardware merge right. better. Sure. Because sure. a lot of these groups may be hyper-focused on software deployments, but other places focus on that. Innovation Week, the Innovation Week 2021 is going to be happening um, when this goes live, probably after two to three weeks after this goes live, Innovation Week will be happening and there'll be a lot of conversations and presentations around different technologies and how they So we are looking at the later stages of April for the Innovation Week to, to, yeah. to happen. Yes, right? that's what they've okay. told us. They haven't finalized on their dates, right. but right. it will be happening around the end of April. Fantastic. So whoever is interested can, can join. It's good. It'll be good to see that. And it's free. Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. Even better. Yeah. Uh, you know, but but going 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 now forward to some of the challenges, right? I mean, yes, it looks all so good on paper. It's so cool, right? But I'm sure each of you has, uh, you know, your own share of challenges and limitations, whether that be it on a personal level, or be it at the country level, uh, or organization level. You know, however you want to address it, feel free. But let me start with Shopat. You came back from Manipal University all enthusiastic, wants to, wants to conquer the world with that piece of information and knowledge that you've come from. Uh, what were some of your challenges? Starting up Robotech, getting the right job, uh, entering or penetrating the market, making yourself visible, uh, and then of course the limitations of you know, what's actually available in the country as far as the, the materials and, 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 and infrastructure is concerned. Share some of your frustrations. I mean, I wouldn't say that, that there were frustrations, there are, there are some frustrations. Right. I mean, so to begin, first of all, is people to understand the concept of STEM. These people think that STEM is most like an engineering kind of forte, but it's not that way, basically. STEM basically is, just, people should understand, is basically development of skills mm -hmm. that can give you leverage to say that you are, uh, you have certain, certain defining talents in you that can make you outstand. So I'm sorry. Or secondly, it can be either complementing skill, they can make you what's needed in the market today. So it's not only technical skills. It's cognitive thinking, uh, working as a team player, solving problems, just simple solutions. This is what STEM is supposed to be all about. Secondly, I think, is um, the reach of STEM. I mean, looking at Robotech, for example, we still don't have that reach of people yet to actually jump in and say we want to do it. Right. You might have a few inputs around 10, 20 people, but that's still not defining impact. You know, it's just that at that point you're still saying, no, oh, there's so much more we can do, and we still know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is, you know, um, for Robotech particularly, again, uh, being a being a space of innovation product, we really need fun. We really need financial support. Right. Right. Because and course. sometimes we, we dig in solely to our pockets. We actually look at can we pay our bills tomorrow? Can we pay our salary tomorrow? <laughs> yes, of course. And because we, we don't, and then we have all the challenges, but then what what counts all these things is our passion again. Passions do not pay the bills though, but we know passion is something that can drive people or innovation. That can result in good fortune. Right. This is so the challenge that we're trying to explain to people is that robotech is a space that you can bring your ideas to life. But to do that, it's an open space. It's not confined to only students who want to learn. We have had people from OEB come and learn like electronics, for example. We have people from uh, public schools, and for them, it's free because for them, it's, it's their equal right. And for right. us, our responsibility to give right. free education. Right. Right. And some people cannot afford. We always understand. Say, okay, you know what? Pay as much as you can, but we'll, we'll help you. So we, we're such an open space that at the end we end up, end up tying ourselves down and right. we can't do further research because we don't have security equipment or the right, support. Right, right. So our biggest challenge would be around this area of support from the community. And outreach. And the outreach. People right. can hear and see what we do. But it's very important if you put yourself inside robot. Don't see what's happening in robotic ones. And then you can actually see this is what we can but do. If, if somebody wants to support you, if somebody wants to help you grow that outreach, right. what would you want them to do? 
So I think first of all, we, uh, uh, we definitely need to um, identify our zone. So we, like I said, we are very diverse in our, in our perspectives of, of innovation. We do health, agriculture, education, and medical as well. So what we basically need is, I think, the community step up and say, you know what, we can help you scale this in the sense of maybe connections or networking, or even sit down and say, you know, we can make this better. Right. See, that support does not maybe financial. So that support can be sit down and listening to you. And maybe that other individual might have that idea that you need to get ahead. Right. So a, a perfect example of that was we met um, uh, one of the, I, th I saw a picture of, 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 of prosthetic arm. And I think that was my biggest inspiration. Those, 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 those big bulky legs and hands. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird because they don't have any functionality. That's a piece of plastic Stump. just right. there for the sake of being there. Right. And we actually asked ourselves, what do they cost? So we went to hospitals, we inquired about it, and we're like, they cost $300 for a prosthetic arm. Right. And just a dummy hand. Right, right. So you actually ask yourself, who can afford it? So we decided yeah. to make something cheaper, and it doesn't even cost even $100. And you know, it's functioning. Wow. So you can just bend the arm and it'll open and close. And we actually want to make it better. So people like, you know, like, Yo, you introduced me to someone like Dr. Mohamed Shabir. Yes, um, yes. Mara and, so, and I are also working on something for the health space. So we're trying to broaden and see the support has come in such a way that we've met people who show interest, who can help us then look at the, the most, I think, feasible prototype and test it. And if it's scalable, then why not? So, so the, the, you, you're trying to say that there is a market in, in fact, any niche that one picks into? Definitely. Absolutely. And, and what you're now venturing into is the, is the prosthetic arm or the prosthetic leg that we've been discussions with. Sectors, yeah. Right. And, and, and that would be interesting for different orthopedic institutions within the country or outside the country yes. that want to bring in such drastic changes to reduce costs for our patients. Definitely. You know, for getting those, those arms about, and legs. About impact. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Such an important uh, piece of information. Uh, Mariam, you being a woman in the field, um, first of all, I, I, I have to congratulate you for taking this brave step of, you know, even though uh, you've done a, a, a medical, uh, you know, clinical medicine degree as, as, a, as, a, as an MD. I think it takes a lot of guts, uh, courage uh, to sort of, you know, decide to venture into a totally different space and find a way to sort of bring synergy to what you've studied and where you want to go. So I, I must commend you for that. You. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm sure there you have your fair... Uh, a share of challenges being a woman in the field or not uh, and and what are some of the, the, the challenges or limitations that you faced uh, in this journey of yours which I'm sure will, will, will be more successful as you go forward? Uh, so I never actually realized how scarce women were in the field until after the CERN debut um, <laughs> uh, which is when I googled I, I actually remember googling a Muslim women in STEM, <laughs> and I came across women who were Muslims uh, in the field. Um, that also in the U.S. Um, yeah. Not. It, it was it was very scarce, very scarce. So when I actually wanted to 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 meet up with these people, they were they were hardly there. I think there are very few women in STEM in the first place in Tanzania. Um, so that's one. Two, when we actually prototyped uh, our device after CERN, it has been extremely difficult to get that prototype industrialized, to get it into the market, to actually um, uh, to actually make so many of them. Um, and Shukat can say more about that. Yeah. Uh, one, two, along the same, so three, along the same lines, um, the skills needed for that was, I felt way out of my depth. Like, like way out of my depth. There were people that I spoke to, there were people that I talked to, but nobody uh, is there to say that, here, this is the person, this is, this is exactly what you need to do. There's a lot of figuring out for yourself. Um, and that's, but, but then again, that's what I'm so used to doing, is figuring things out for myself, because right. even exactly what I want to do, um, the field is there, it's called biomedical engineering. Right. But most master courses, most of them, require you to have done engineering as your bachelor's. Um, so there's that that I'm facing right now, but I don't see that as a big problem, because right. there's, always, right. there's always going to Robotech for courses, and there's always <laughs> online courses and all of that. Um, so in a nutshell, that would be the current challenges that I can remember at the moment. <laughs> Right, right. I mean, great. I mean, I think, I think if we have female audiences here, there's a lot to draw inspiration from, 
from you because number one, it tells me that entering STEM or STEAM yeah. uh, is not something you need to know from before. It's not something that needs to be your first degree. Yeah. You are a live example of that. Yeah. And, and, and anybody can and want or wishes to join the field can do so at any stage of their life as long as they know why they are entering the field and what they want to accomplish, right? Because it, it gives you that opportunity to sort of explore uh, in, in, various, in various ways. Now, talking about exploration um, and, and, and connecting that to education, you know, Isa, if you can, if you can help us understand, especially from the audiences, what should one focus on in school in terms of subjects or what, what, what is really the requirement to enter the field if I am I'm somebody in, in, in high school uh, or in, in my A-levels at the moment? I think your statement already just answered that, the previous one, that they can enter at any point in time. Right. They don't need anything to right. have done previously. Right. Right. Um, the only reason I got into this through this direction is because no other field was as interesting to me. And if you want more software focus, then Google is your best friend. You can find tons of courses. YouTube has everything. The skill that they should focus on is self-motivation because that becomes a big <laughs> challenge. And especially when you get into coding, it may sound so fantastical, it can be mind numbing. Right, right. It can be one of the most boring things you will ever do, but what keeps you going is the output, what you create through that. Right, right. And similarly, just because you started in one side, maybe coding doesn't stop anyone from shifting to another, like the electronic side of things or the hardware side of things. I started out more in hardware circuitry at Robotech. It gave me headaches. <laughs> it, it gave me literal headaches. I shifted to coding. Coding did not work out for me. So now I'm in an interesting segment where I look at what can this technology enable and how do I manage to uh, solve people's problems with the technology, but I don't actually create it. Yeah. I will guide you to the yeah. community. That, that's me. Yeah. Well, who created it? Well, uh, well, well I'm going into creating. Yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, so I will bring you to the people who can create it. So what I'm getting at is, like your statement alluded to, there is no specific requirements you need to hit uh, in terms of like, oh, you should study this at A-levels, oh, you should uh, do this type of course. The moment you decide you want to get into it, especially when you have an application in mind that, hey, I'm in the medical field, I want more people to have access to quality medical services, but mm -hmm. we don't have enough humans, so can we replace the humans with something else? In comes the technology to replace the humans. Right. So right. you're like, oh, I can use technology here. So which technology do I need to know? And you start going down the rabbit hole. You just go and go and go and yeah, you may never come out of it. You may stay <laughs> there itself. But the point is that it'll happen at any time and you just follow whatever you're looking to apply it for. The rest will come on its own. So it's not really about the subjects, but rather the skill that you think you would need for you to be able to achieve what you set out to do. Yeah. Yes, but right. that's very much more from the technology. Con side of the conversation. Right, We're talking right. more like the biomedical right, side because sure, you guys sure. still fall at the STEM. We, st we still would need, for example, for Mariam, we, we would still need biology. We would still need our, our basics. In yeah, the, yeah. You know, We're still in a mix of stuff. Chemistry and all of those things. Yeah, so us pure techies, we are a different <laughs> conversation. Right, right, right. Who play with the hardware and the software. Right. Yeah. The other side of the sciences, you need to talk to the people <laughs> who know that side <laughs> of the sciences. Well, it, it compliments, right? I mean, if yeah. uh, Mariam comes and I say, hey, can you build this thing? Of, out of for the medical for the medical sector, You're like we can actually combine heads and say, hey, we know what yeah, thing. normally we really combine fun. heads, yeah. but if, if we are trying to tell someone, hey, how do you get into STEM? Yeah, yeah. STEM is too broad to give up very over. STEM, but but yeah. so, so so here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I do acknowledge the fact that STEM is a very wide thing, and it sort of wants somebody to to have skills and not the subjects. But there has to be something that needs to be your base. 
If I'm mm -hmm. a school student, okay. it would not help to know that I don't need to focus on any subject, right? If I want to enter into the space, there has to be something that I need to hold on to uh, until I'm able to make a decision as to I want to enter the field. What would that be? Maybe Shokat, you wanna you wanna attempt that question. It's it's a very straightforward question. I right. mean, it's a very straightforward answer. Right. It's basically how you how you portray the subject itself. Right. If you're learning math or say science or physics today, right? If I was everyone if you guys remember Pascal's law yeah. of pressures, right? <laughs> uh, how is it, what's the formula for pressure? Force over area? Force over area. Yeah. You see, so it's a basic physics, science concept. But okay, someone's gonna say how they use this in my life. Yeah. So any student would be like, it's just another uh, formula to memorize and pass the example. Yeah. What if I show you to make a water rocket out of it? Right. So right. depending on the size of the diameter of the bottle, how right. much water you put in, how much pressure, right. you can see the result. So what you really need to do basically is show the application of that in classroom. So that's that's a fantastic have. area that you're touching into, you right? You know, to absolutely. And thank you for bringing it up because I think we also need to think out of the box in terms of how we teach these yeah, things, right? So it's it's not really about going and, and, and mugging what you what you see on the blackboard and then vomiting it on the paper, <laughs> but rather how am I applying that yeah. principle yeah. into a practical application and, yeah. and what that means for the real world, and right? That's that the ground roots, literally, at right. the primary school. But right, right, I don't know. right. I mean, now, 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 bringing Isa back to the, to, the, to the conversation, you know, of course, if I'm a parent or if, if, or if just if I'm somebody who's, who's you know, wanting to get into the field, how do I make my money? Uh, yeah. you know, oh. how, how, how do I get oh. into the space yeah. uh, guy for the where, uh, <laughs> where I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in terms of my earning? Uh, so, of course, life has to move on. Yeah. Uh, families will, will start. But So, am I ensuring, how do I ensure myself that uh, the space that I'm entering will give me that revenue to be able to sustain myself? My answer is experimental okay. because I'm in that process myself of figuring that out and I'm busy trying to um, upset quite a few things with my normal uh, employment, self-employment kind of thing. So it, it comes back to the basics though. How creative can you be? Because this, <laughs> how to make money? Solve someone's problem. If you're solving a big enough problem, they'll be willing to pay for it. That's the th rule of thumb at the end of the day. If you're solving a problem for someone, be it a corporate, be it an organization, be it an individual, there will be someone willing to pay for it because it's a value exchange. Mm -hmm. You understand? There is nothing like free lunch here. Right, right. And <laughs> you just need to be ready to, to charge for it. For that, the service. Yeah, yeah. Sure. There will be times when... When you start getting more into the computer field and things like that, it, and people recognize you as the tech guy, the computer guy, don't be surprised people coming to you, hey, can you install Lightroom for me? Can you install for Even if that's not what you do, <laughs> but it just falls under the domain of your skills. Sure. And at some point, it should just click that, hey, why am I doing this for free? I'm yeah. spending time <laughs> to do this for yeah. someone, exactly. and they don't have the skills. Right. I'm right. doing something for them, and they potentially can will end up using this software to earn for themselves. So why am I not getting a cut? But, but, but then at some point, you really need to negotiate and put your step foot, foot down in terms of being able to say that, look, this is a service that I value and therefore I need to be uh, reimbursed for my services. Yeah, yeah, you should. Of course, you're always going to find people who don't see the same value, yeah. right? And, and so if you're charging X and, the, and they go like, no, 25% of X, or no, no money at all. And so, how do, you, how, do you, how do you deal with that situation? Now so that's becoming depends. a conversation of realizing one's value. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a very difficult conversation as a student because you're getting into the market, you're trying to look for jobs, and at that point you just don't know what is the value of a person, especially here where I found Six that months. not many people are transparent about their salary trying to ask someone, hey, how much do you earn yeah. in this job, even though we might be colleagues working in a similar job, right. is, is a very difficult thing. And you find that, um, so it becomes very difficult as a student to value ourselves and our skills, but at some point we just have to know when to say no, when to say that, okay, um, for example, you've invited me on enough talk shows for free. Now I'm charging you right. for this because <laughs> I'm, I'm not just giving you all of this for free. No, right, I, right. I realize that I spent 
time to learn these skills. I went through whatever challenges I did to acquire this, spent however many hours going down that Google rabbit hole, and I have something that others can use in their advantage. Sure. And sure. the moment we realize that we have that value, mm -hmm. then it's just about creatively applying it. Like I said, I did not want to get technical in the coding side of things. Even though there are times where I do get technical, mm -hmm. I normally don't prefer to do so. So I've branded myself as the type of person who you want to know how to use this technology in a particular setting. That's the question I answer for you. Right. The moment you know that, and you want to go ahead with it, I will connect you to the people who can actually do it now. Right. Because a lot of times the people who actually do it are hyper specialized. They know their technology A to Z, but they may not know how it uh, interacts with other fields. Right. The times right. when right. you need the, the different experts to come together. So the beauty of technology, you can go down multiple paths. You can freelance and develop for a lot of people. You can decide to just get hired in a normal company. You can decide to just be creative and look for an interesting way to give out your services. And sure. that's purely up to how can I give my value to the person who can benefit from my value. Fantastic. I think you summed it up really, really, really nicely. Shokat, uh, you have been, you have been on both sides, uh, as an employee and now as an employer. Yeah. What's that journey been like? And, and oh, it's, it's just difficult. It's just difficult. It's, I think people like Mariam has, I think so Mariam, Mariam and Issa have been really close friends of mine. Right. right. They right. still stumbles. There are days where you just want to cry it out loud and say, no, I'm just done with it. And there are days, you know, you just want to have, no, it's, it's those, there are those days in, as an entrepreneur, as an employer, but you don't have even the money to put fully on your table. Right. You say one day you'll do it. So it, the journey is difficult. It's right. never been easy. So it's not all rosy oh, and, and, no, 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 and cool no. as it sounds. It's, it's, it's got its fair share of oh, challenges. Yes, yes. It, 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 is, it is always going to be difficult because you know, sure. it's, it, people think you know, being a boss of a company is the biggest thing. It's more about the pay, the state, status, the, the office. And I'm like, you know what? Even being a boss is the most difficult thing because you have so much responsibility in your head. Absolutely. And you make one long call, everyone gets hurt. So the same thing I would say is that the journey itself is it's difficult. If you do have the I think the, the guts to do it and the ability go to actually it. go for it, okay, mm -hmm. try it. But then be ready for the tough be ready for the toughness ahead because there'll right. be days will be right. nights where you won't be able to sleep, you'll get a lot of thoughts, second thoughts about <laughs> it. And it's, and being honest about the how do you actually think about it? Like, am I really sure about this? Right. Well again it's, it's just that value when the kids come and bring to you, you know what? Right. They thank you for what they've learned, they go back and talk about your work. Sure. That's the fuel that drives me. So Absolutely. that's the Absolutely. same thing, I don't know. What Mario Marisa have to say about that as well. Oh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, you wanna, you wanna. Oh, what did you, you say? You want to answer something? Right? I, I was, I was actually going to. About the whole entrepreneurship thing. Really oh yeah, absolutely. But I think it's it's definitely yeah. worth it because you're yeah. seeing your idea that you were come just dreaming life. of yeah. uh, come to life. That's that's absolutely beautiful. And plus the amount of people that Robotech has inspired, uh, me and Isa are definitely one of them because that's how I knew that this is. Uh, STEM is definitely the field that I wanted to go in was right. after right. actually right. helping him with TechFest. <laughs> so, so Maria, tell us a bit about the STEM scene in Tanzania. Uh, so really what's hot at the moment in terms of the different aspects of the field, but also what are the kind of activities that are happening across different ages uh, and in those fields? Um, so although my interest has been in the hardware side of things, um, what it, it looks like Tanzania has sort of almost skipped the industrialization and skipped right into the digital age. So computer science, um, AI, those are the kind of things that are cropping up right now uh, a lot. I found when I was looking for a job after my undergraduate, it was very easy to find jobs in those startups, but there was almost nothing in the hardware side of things. In, right. in TZ. Right. Um, and then you ask the, exp so the, the activities, like what can you do? Um, so from my experience, I, when I was uh, exploring the field and exploring what I wanted to do, because I knew it wasn't medicine in the long term, uh, back in my undergraduate, I attended a lot of uh, talk shows. So there's something called Pecha Kucha, yeah. where a lot of different people from, they do completely different things. They just come and they talk uh, for 20 minutes, 20, 20 seconds per slide 
a slideshow of 20 slides. 20 slides, 20 yeah. slides. And they, you could just talk about absolutely anything. So someone will come and talk about their favorite food, uh, or someone would come and talk about like what they created. Someone actually did this talk on uh, artwork that they created from microbes, by the way, which was super cool. Um, so all these inspirational things, and through that I met so many different people. I met someone uh, who was trying to find a sterilization technique for mosquitoes. I think he works in Ifakara. Um, and that's also where I met Shokut. Um, there are also, I, I explored Facebook events a lot, so social media was a huge uh, part of my exploration. That's also how I found the CERN MedTech hack, it was just a Facebook ad. Um, there was graffiti paint group that I joined, um, and there are also hubs, talks that were happening in different hubs. Uh, there's Hub 255, there's a bunch of others that I think Isa and Shokat know more about. Yeah. Ndoto Hub. Um, Anza? There's Anza Hub as well. Virgin Inspire, there is Sahara Sparks. And Sahara Sparks is in the hub. Okay. But it's a space where they get information. Sahara, right? Sahara yeah. Sparks is definitely something to follow. Yeah. yeah. It's like a big program, isn't it? Like yeah, it's, a, it's an event kind of like innovation. Right? So that all pop up and it's like to make your job easy. Yeah. There's a website. Right. Called, for, called the Innovation Map. And they're currently ah. working on mapping all of the hubs and centers that exist in Tanzania. Mm. Right. And they so another important thing was following people who I knew were doing this or going to this kind of stuff. It was very vague at the time. Yeah. Right. But yeah, so definitely look out for them, which does not mean follow us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to sort of round, round up our, our discussion, I have one last question for, uh, for Brother Shokar. So, You've, you've been most experienced from the three uh, in, in, in this field here. How, 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 do, you see, how do you see Tanzania, um, particularly for, for fields that fall under the STEM world, um, chart out, say, in the next 15 years down the line? What do you see changing um, from, from this point to, to 15 years down the line? Um, and, and, yeah. So first of all, I think it's like I'm not correct. I think Isa might have correct me if I'm right. First of all, I think it's the uprise of all these innovations and startups recently over the last few months. So initially, you would only hear innovations about I think health or farming or tech, but now you have things like blockchain, things like AI coming up and fintech, yeah. and now you see that some that people who have an idea but someone that want to get want to get out there to be known. So how does the government as has acknowledged this basically is trying to identify what the current trends are in the world and trying to bring it in here. Um, again, the perfect example, like I said, was first of all the current change in, in the education system. Like you mentioned, that the subjects had become uh, changed. So right. Industrial computer science, right. languages. Right. I think it's the first step I think the government has taken okay. in identifying okay. that there's a gap that is missing in the education system itself. Secondly, was I think the industrialization aspect, where the former president, so I would say the late president, I would say? The late president. The late president, right. He was focusing on the aspect of industrialization, where he wanted people themselves to stand up and say, okay, now you can tell me what you want to do. He gave him a hand saying, okay, you want to take over businesses, you need the skills to do it. So he started, he started having this informal training from, I think, Japanese and Chinese coming in and training people on how to convert their, just literally from farmers, literally farmers who can take their grains all the way to actually selling to directly to consumer. So there's no middleman involved. That was adoption of technology right there. So how do you how do you need to get the middleman to connect you directly from the customer or the consumer to the producer? So that's one step I really like as well. But again, what I think is missing and should be inculcated is how do we foster local manufacturing? How right. do we foster what is happening out there and again here? The perfect example that I really like that I think the Ghana president mentioned that there's, they've stopped importing cocoa to uh, Switzerland for chocolates. He said, if you want to make chocolates without resources, come and make it in Ghana. So if Tanzania has resources that we, we, really, we have, I think it's the, mostly the agriculture sector, if you want these resources, come and build with us. Build so that us. way, not only are you building with us, but the people also get involved. involved in it. So that is something I really think should be happening. But I think it's still that failure, so no, it's still product testing and seeing how right. things are going. Right. I only fear it shouldn't be too late. Right. People say, you know, put their hands and say, we're just right. Okay. right, right. Thank, Thank you so much for that. I think, I think all of you have uh, really uh, greatly contributed to this discussion. And I sort of want to round off this, uh, this show uh, by, by giving you the opportunity to talk to your audiences. Uh, what is it that you would like? So, so we'll start with, with, with Dr. Mariam. 
what is it you know you've got you've got girls ladies mothers looking at you you've got you've got aspiring people who want to get into the medical field and then you know venture into technology and see how that complements the medical field listening to you today uh, what is it you want to tell them um, so one of the things that played a role in shaping the person that I am today is uh, when I was young I would read a lot I would read a lot of stories so my imagination was always fired up I was always uh, writing new stories I was always um, imagining new things and that is what makes me so passionate about um, creating absolutely new technologies f as solutions. Um, so don't lose your imagination as you grow up. Continue to be curious, continue to be passionate. And if you're still not sure about what exactly you want to do, keep widening your options. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to zone into one thing. People, your, your vision as well will also change as you grow up. Um, for example, I know someone who is now 35 and now is when he says that oh this is what i realize i want to do although he's completely accomplished earns an amazing salary but now he's like this is what i want to focus on so it's fine for your vision to keep changing if you're 16 17 you still haven't figured out what you want to do that's perfectly fine just go with what you liked the most and if you didn't like any of that that's also perfectly fine widen your options thank you so much uh isa you've got your you know viewers looking at you today and, and those who want to enter the, the IT world, the computer science world, uh, <laughs> what is it that you advise them? I mean, if we're being specific to the computer science world and the development world, then that answer is simple. Become a pro Googler. <laughs> know how to use Google <laughs> because no matter how many years of software dev experience you have, if you're in the software world, you will always Google and as much as I w we'd want to say we built a software on our own, uh, for those who know Stack Overflow, without it, we'd, we'd never survive. Uh, how the developers before the age of the internet survived, I, I will never know. Um, but beyond that, the theme remains constant, curiosity. Follow your curiosity and be willing to question why. And honestly, if you're with people who aren't ready to answer that question, or at the very least who aren't ready to explore a potential answer to that question, at least trying to find an answer to that question, drop them. <laughs> like, like just, there's no need to spend as much time with them as people who would be willing to explore that answer with you or help you find an answer to your questions. And I understand sometimes if um, uh, parents aren't willing to answer those questions or entertain them or whatever, we can't exactly drop them, but um, you understand that there will be times when to satisfy that intellectual curiosity, you need to find other groups of friends or people to interact with. and need to know when that step is required, when you're willing to make that step. Right, right. Thank, thank you, thank you so much, Isa. And, and Shokat, for you, you've got, you've got a, a wider audience looking at you. You've got companies, you've got the government, you've got the society, you've got parents, you've got students as well, because those are the, the areas that you actually touch upon. What is it that you tell them? I mean, pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I think just to answer, just to add one of Isa's points, it's not what's your why. It's the same thing I said in my TED talk. Like you should know what what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, apart from that, I think just beginning from the ground root first of all, like for something so from the grassroots, if I may say. Um, I would encourage people. Okay, if you spend your holidays with the family, but spend some holidays visiting a field of interest. If you're a person who wants to see the the innovation side, you want to see the uh, agricultural side. It's always important to take, you call this uh, job shadowing, where you actually oh, go yeah. visit someone in the field itself. And you can see what it's like being in the shoes and say this, then you can ask yourself some questions. Do I see myself doing this? Do I see myself growing in this field? Then apart from that as well, again, even when students were in high school and they finished high school and leave university, the pressure is on for that right. degree, right? Like I'm running, mm -hmm. my friends are going ahead. I mean, this is the only thing I tell people when they finish that is, you're, you're not ahead of time, not behind you. You're just, you're just in time. And right. I think it's very important for people to even take some time off, even if it's like a gap year, 
explore it. There's so much happening in today's world that unless you put your feet or dip your feet into the water or the sea, then you'll actually get to know this is what I can see myself doing the next five, ten years down the line. And there's no harm trying. Just, just go crazy. This is what the people like. Go crazy. Go and just be as passionately curious as I am and as I as always aspire to make, make people do the same. So that's sort of my only honest advice to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dear viewers, that was... Uh, uh, now that we uh, reach the end of our show, I want to thank Dr. Mariam for uh, joining us today. I want to thank uh, Isa, Muhammad Ali, and uh, Shoka Tusen for really uh, sharing their wisdom, their knowledge, their experience, uh, and as well as providing advice to our youngsters uh, and audiences, in the parents, parents included, on their own uh, uh, you know, experiences within the STEM uh, field. Tanzania is very much out there when it comes to propagating STEM. The, the, the market is there, the opportunity is there. If you are really passionate, uh, as, as you must have um, noticed, the, the trend between all these panelists is all of them were passionately curious. All of them were, um, they did not know what they wanted to do, but they wanted to do everything together. So, so if that's you, then maybe STEM is for you. Uh, and therefore, um, this, this, this really is, is, I think, I hope this benefits uh, our audiences today. And uh, the episode will be uh, premiering on the 9th of April, 7.30 p.m. on the KSIJDAR channel. Uh, and the viewers will be uh, live on, on the YouTube channel and will be answering your, your questions uh, on, in real time as and when the show premieres. So thank you very much, and I want to uh, finally thank um, uh, Team 3C, the KSIJ Jamaat, as well as the IBN TV for uh, generously giving us their studio for this recording. Thank you very much, and uh, have a nice day. Thank you.